So yesterday, I did some mushrooms and watched A Clockwork Orange. Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange. And uh, let me tell you, first of all, again, I was on mushrooms when I watched this movie, and that's a challenge. Like, I want to say I deserve, like, f some fucking gamer score for that fucking shit, man. Watching this movie on shrooms was difficult. But it was an experience. It was an experience. So I want to watch every Kubrick film while on Mushrooms. That's my goal. He doesn't have that many of them, but they're all great that I've seen so far. And so I'm continuing that, that challenge with A Clockwork Orange. Um, and so for those of you that don't know what this movie is, you know, it's based on a book. Uh, I believe this popularized the phrase ultraviolence, which I like. Um, and, uh, the movie is extremely violent, right? It has graphic depictions of violence, rape, death, murder. Um, and so the theme is, you know, the, the main character is in a gang. Apparently he's 14 years old, but he's played by a 27 year old. So you'd never, you would never guess. Um, and he's a part of a gang that just goes around and, like, beats the shit out of people and kills them. And then eventually he gets convicted for murder. And then he's thrown into the institutions. And so what I like about this movie, and I would like to read the book at some point. What I like about this movie is that it really showcases how prisons as an institution and how medical fascism in a lot of ways, is just as bad as direct senseless violence. And that's kind of the theme that I get from this, right? Institutional violence and criminal gang violence are basically the same thing. And that's kind of really my favorite part of this film is when the main character, Alex, goes to jail and his former gang members, right, become police officers. And after he gets out of jail, his former gang members are now police and they use their authority as police to beat the fucking shit out of them. And that perfectly encapsulates how our society functions. It really does. It's a really well-made critique of our society. But anyway, man, Watching this movie on mushrooms was a fucking experience, let me tell you. First of all, why can't every house and every building in the world look like a Stanley Kubrick film? Like, the house that Alex lives in, there's like cool wallpaper on every wall. Not just every wall in the room has one design, but every wall has a different design. That's fucking crazy! I want to live in a Stanley Kubrick film. Let me tell you, there's colors everywhere. There's wallpaper that looks great. There's like, uh, man, this guy, I don't know how he does it, but he has a really good knack for that fucking color, you know, contrast, right? It's pretty crazy. Like every set and every movie I've seen is just a masterpiece, right? It's all just so great for the eyes, right? Like especially the set at the house where the writer is, right? Where it's like that when he knocks on the door and there's the hall of mirrors. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. I mean, that shit is, it's so great. It's great is what it is. It's great. Now, I don't know if this is part of the film. I watched this film while I was on mushrooms. But one of the things that was really fucking horrifying was when Alex goes to prison. Uh, and all of the prison characters scream. And, the, and it, it, the rooms are empty and echoey. Now, I don't know if that's in the film. It could have been in my head. I think it's in the film. I think it's in the film. But it might not have been. But the parts where he's in prison and you've got this guy that looks like Adolf Hitler, by the way. Right? Just screaming. And then you hear the echoes, like, absorb the whole room. I'm not going to lie. That shit was freaking me out. I was like, why is this guy yelling? Why is he yelling? Make him stop. Anyway, um, that shit was crazy. I loved it. The This movie also has that 
famous Kubrick stare, really well done, where the lead actor is just like, the movie starts and the lead actor is like sinister stare and it zooms out. It's great. Again, I, I really enjoy watching movies on mushrooms that are not good. Or like for you know like that are not pleasurable like this is an emotional roller coaster to watch a movie like this on mushrooms like it's a great film it's a masterpiece in its own way but it's a challenge like just watching the movie sober is a challenge worth accepting but watching this movie on mushrooms is insane because it's like just so like the part where he's in the chair and he's got the eyes open oh oh I was freaking out. I was like in my bed. I was like, oh, oh, right? Like it was so hard to watch. It was so hard to watch, man. It's a challenge. Again, I deserve, I deserve an achievement for being able to sit through this movie on mushrooms. It's crazy. And it was, it was worth it. It was difficult. At some points I wanted to turn it off because I was scared for my life, but it was also really good. I love the part when the lead character is in prison reading the Bible and then they act out scenes of the Bible with him as, like, characters in the Bible. And he's, like, crucifying Jesus and stuff. It's great. It's so good. It's so good. This movie is great. Like, it's just great. But again, like, the thing is, like, the... So there's the multiple chapters of the film. Right? The one at the start where he's just being a senseless criminal, just beating the shit out of random people and murdering them and raping people and so forth. Um, and then he goes to prison and then he gets beaten down by the prison institutions into a yes man. Like he's like, you know, they make a point of him saying sir to everyone and being super respectful. He's trying to succeed within the system to get out as soon as he can. Right. And then he takes part in this experimental program that basically traumatizes him by making him watch violent films and associating it with pain and torture. But it has the unintended side effect because one of the films had background music of his favorite uh, song, uh, the old Ludwig Van. And so, uh, you know, so he becomes traumatized by the music that he loves as well, right? So it has that unintended side effect. Yo, I just want to say, man, when he was on stage in front of like the Hitler guy, right? I, like, again, I'm, I'm on shrooms watching this. When he's doing the, like, you know, he's trying to prove that he's reformed and the treatment worked and there's all the doctors and that Hitler guy who is just like, every time they move the camera to that Hitler guy, right? And he's just like, right? And he makes those fucking faces, right? And so, like, you know, they have the guy beating the shit out of him on stage and then they got the topless chick come out, right? And then they do that scene where he's, like, staring up at her tits and trying to, like, grab her tits, but then he starts, like, having a meltdown. And then the fucking Hitler guy goes to the camera, goes to the Hitler guy who's looking at the titty bitch, and then he's, like, and I'm, like, freaking out. I'm, like, this is, I can't watch this. I, I'm, like, I can't watch this. Like, it's so uncomfortable. Oh, my God. Anyway, um, so, yeah, like, it's just, a, this is so uncomfortable to watch, man. It's so, it's, but it's, it's a challenge and it's worth doing it. It's an emotional roller coaster, and that's what I like about it. So then, of course, Alex gets out of prison, right? The experimental torture program, the medical fascism worked, right? He is no longer able to do any violence, right? And then, uh, then he goes out into the world. And then, like, it's like a big come up its karma story. He sees, like, a homeless person he beat the shit out of at the beginning of the movie. Right? And then all of his homeless friends start beating the shit out of him. And then the police come to help him. But wait, it's your former gang mates. And then they beat the shit out of him. And then he crawls to a, a home nearby where the police dropped him off and beat the shit out of him in a forest. It's raining. He crawls to a random place to ask for help. Wait! That's the same house that you committed untold amounts of crimes against at the beginning of the movie. It's it's just the it's great. It's great. Right? And then of course when he's do the singing in the rain, right? When he's in the bath and he's singing singing in the rain, and then that triggers the writer and the writer remembers who he is. Oh. It's great. I mean it's great. I like the movie is great. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Every part of it, like when he's eating that big plate of pasta, that made me hungry as hell. At the end of the movie, when they're in that room and you got like the big hunk guy carrying around the dude in the wheelchair, right? 
And then, like, the lead character is just eating pasta. Oh, like I, like, I was listening to, like, the fork swirling on the pasta. I was like, oh, man, I am horny for fucking pasta right now. I was, oof, that's a whole... Anyway, again, the set design, the colors were all fucking fantastic. So anyway, the writer then tortures him and tortures him so much that he tries to kill himself, the lead character. And then he wakes up in a hospital and, uh, and then like, you know, the leader of like the minister of whatever that was in charge of the experimental torture program that put him, that he put him through, uh, tries to cure him, tries to fix his problems uh, you know, just for, like, if he goes out there into the newspapers and says, like, yeah, they fixed me, I'm all good, the government's great, you know, they're trying to use him for political gain. Um, the ending, when the minister guy is coming in there, like, you know, the politician, and talking to him, and then, like, they agree that he's gonna do positive press for the government in exchange for treatment and support, and then the press come in, that was so uncomfortable. That was so uncomfortable to watch the press come in and just take so many pictures of him. And then they do that thing, you know, where like the like Kubrick stays on that scene uncomfortably along. Again, I'm on mushrooms. So I don't know if this is like a 30 second scene or like a three hour scene. I don't know. But like he's like posing with the minister going like. Right. It's just uncomfortably long. It's like, how many photos do you need? Do you need every possible angle? Right. Like of me going like this and that. And there's like uh, it's so it's an uncomfortably long period of time. And again, it was just a good movie. It's a great fucking movie. I'm aware that there's an additional chapter in the book. I've not read the book. I would like to read the book at some point. But the movie, as it is, as I, you know, as a different, I don't, in the same way that The Shining is the movie, Kubrick Shining versus King Shining, the book, they're different experiences, right? You're like, yeah, the book might be good. I haven't read it yet. I would like to, though. But I'm talking, you know, the movie itself ending in that note, I think is good. But anyway, what a fucking film. It, again, it was a challenge to watch this film on Mushrooms. I deserve an achievement. I deserve some sort of award. Like, goddamn. Andrew Kohler, $5 Super Chat. Anthony Burgess said gay conversion was his inspiration for the Ludovico technique. Also, ACO has a chapter not in the first American version yet. They, like, removed the chapter in the American version because the publisher was like, eh, it's a little cringy. But damn. I just, again, I'm so impressed with Kubrick's movies. And again, I want to watch every single one of them on shrooms, regardless of how intense and challenging the experience would be. But A Clockwork Orange... An emotional fucking roller coaster. It was hard to watch. It was hard to watch. Let me tell you. Like, it might be one of the hardest movies that I've ever watched on Shrooms. It might be up there with Beyond the Black Rainbow. Beyond the Black Rainbow had me in tears when I was watching that movie on Shrooms. Wow, that was that was hard to watch as well. I gotta watch it again. But damn, this one, I did it. I'm alive. I made it to the other side. Again, I just want to say I don't recommend doing drugs. Drugs are bad. They're illegal. Don't break the law. I love the law. I'm a law-abiding citizen. Um, but damn. What a movie. Masterpiece, let me just tell you. I watched another movie yesterday, but I'll, I'll talk.